Hi, it's Wolf from StoneyCastle.com. And here on YouTube, you know me as what? Well. Epic Fantasy, that's right. And this is my latest tutorial. This is a fun phone bar project. This is the saw cleaver from the new video game, Bloodborne. Crazy looking thing, right? Really, really a lot of fun. Not that hard of a project. And we even made it so it works correctly. What I mean is, you put pins in it like this, and you take the pins out, and then you can fold it up like this, right? Put the pins back in, and you're good to go. So it opens and closes and locks in the open and closed position. Kind of fun. I like it. Uh, thanks for watching. Of course, I give you the template for this project. It's in the link below. Uh, thanks for watching my videos. If you're a subscriber, thanks for that. If you're not, hit that button. Always lots of fun and creative and interesting projects. I do two new videos every week. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and treasure chase, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model box, and animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. All right, print up the template and cut out the pieces. The template's in the link below. And there's not a whole lot of pieces to this project. And they're big pieces, so they're kind of easy to put together. Now take these three pieces like this, A, B, and C, and tape them together to form the cleaver. And then take these pieces for the handle and see how they're marked with a star or a circle or a square. That way you know how to match them up and tape those together too. See the square and a diamond, triangle. And now you've got the template for the handle. See, match the triangle to the triangle and the square to the square. That's important. And then we're going to trace these pieces out. Let's start with the cleaver. Trace that on foam board. You just need one. Looks good. And then cut it out. And if you have trouble with the saw teeth, which you might have, you can do this. Cut it in pieces, go a little bit at a time, and then cut that piece out, and then you can remove it like this. That makes it easy to work your way among the tooth of that saw blade. Among the teeth of that saw blade. And here's a nice little tip. When you're doing the other end of that blade, make a wavy, little bit of a wobbly pattern like that. It gives it a real medieval kind of feel to it. So you wobble your... Um, X-Acto knife a little bit when you're doing it. That's optional, but it looks good. And then trace out, now trace out the handle, and do two of these. And cut those out. Now, here's a little thing. See the template has this written on it? Trace twice, then cut here and trace once. You've already traced twice. Now cut there, cut that right off, And trace that. Now trace the remaining. Save this. Save that. You're going to need it. And then take this piece and trace one of them. And, I, and cut that out. And then you have all your foam board pieces. There's a couple of other little tiny pieces we're going to make, but this is all the foam board. So now here's a nice little tip. If you want those saw teeth that look really good, so an optional thing you can do is bevel them. You can bevel them, bevel them on one side, or you can bevel them on both sides to bring them to a point. And it looks really, really vicious. See, it does not look good. Just like one of those old lumberjack saws where you have two guys sawing away at a tree. Now, this is important. Use some white glue at full strength. Don't, don't water it down. And... Um, put it on your edges like this to strengthen and preserve that foam board. This will help keep the edge and make it stronger. And then wipe it with your fingers like this. This is an important little tip. Don't skip that point. And if you have some Mod Podge, now that that's done, once that's dried, you have some Mod Podge, put a nice thin coat of Mod Podge on that blade on both sides. And you want it thin and you don't want to water it down because the, the foam board could warp. So now let's glue the handle together. Take all three pieces like that, with the short piece in the middle, and glue them down. See how there's a gap there? That's our hinge. Match it all up really nice, but you can, after it's glued, 
and it's dried, you can sand it and cut it with an exacto knife to um, to just make it nice and neat and everything smooth. And then go ahead and put a bevel around that handle like this, around all the edges of the handle, staying away from the section in the middle where the, hand, where the hinge is. Right? Don't bevel that section where the hinge is right in there. Leave that alone. It makes for a stronger pivoting. Now go ahead just like we did with the cleaver. Do the same thing with the handle. Put some white glue on it. Spread it with your finger. This will strengthen it and, and preserve it. And seal it. If you, if you use spray paint on this, most spray paints will actually eat that foam. Now, when you're doing this, make sure you do these edges too, but clean that out with a brush. You don't want glue to gum that up. That's a hinge point. If glue gets in there, it could make it sticky and it won't, um, and it won't um, swing smoothly. So let's paint it. Do the whole thing a nice, even, thin coat of black. Both the blade and the handle. And then now let's put it together. Put it like this. Make sure you get the handle in the right direction so it looks like this. See it? And then draw a line on it. And I'll show you what I mean right here. Draw a line like this because now what you want to do is before you put any holes in it, you want to check it to make sure you've got it right and it swings smoothly. See, so try swinging it like this to the open position and swing it back to the closed position. And if you get your lines where everything is smooth, that's the spot you're going to keep it in. So we're using a quarter inch dowel here and um, carve a piece to a point like that. And I'll show you why in a second. Use some kind of a tool. We get an awl and puncture that all right through the middle. And then use your dowel to open it up because the quarter inch dowel is what we're going to use to pin it. So yeah, we took it apart. Makes it a little bit easy to work with. But make sure if you, if you take it apart to puncture it, make sure you puncture the center one too. I feel like I want to go find a tree with that thing. I want to go find a partner and go saw down a tree with this thing. So, and this is important, clean that up in there in the middle because that can cause it to not hinge well. And then put a thin coat of Mod Podge on it to preserve it and keep it strong and make sure it works well when pivoting. A thin coat. And on the outside part too. So now we're going to cut ourselves three pins. This first pin is three quarters of an inch in length. And you can fudge that a little bit. It can be a little longer if need be. But it's, it has to be as long as the three sheets of foam board. And then two more pins that are an inch long. So put your handle together. Line up the pins. Make sure you have the handle in the right direction. Because I goofed this up. I had it backwards and then had to turn it around. Um, and put the pin in it. Check it, make sure it swings well, and then you can go ahead and glue the top and bottom of that pin. You don't want the glue to get inside, just a hot glue is nice for this. If the hot glue gets inside, it won't, it won't pivot. Now let me just show you what I mean. This is what, we're, this is what we're aiming for with the pins when we drill these next holes. Right? Those, there are two holes in the cleaver and they match in both directions. See like this? So what you do is you spin it around and you can put the pins back in. Open. But those two holes line up correctly. So that's what we're doing. See that? It's kind of neat. So now remember this part that we cut away? Take that part and line it up on your handle. Puncture some holes in the template where it shows you there. Line it right up and then mark those holes. Now make sure you have your handle in either the open or the closed position. Can't be halfway in between somewhere. Puncture them with some kind of a tool. Start with some kind of a tool like an awl if you have one. And then open it up with your <clears throat> your dowel, the dowel you sharpened. Take your time with this. Don't, 
Don't overly work the foam board. Watch your other hand that you don't bend something because this is a bit tricky. And test them. Make sure they work and they fit well. But then don't glue these. These don't get glued. See, very nice. I like it a lot. That's just like a barber's razor when it's folded up like that. So now those pins, we're going to tie them together with a piece of string. So do this. Put a little notch in them like this. See it? I'll show you right here. See it? See the notch all the way around the circumference of that pin? Do it on both pins like that. Then you can tie a string or a piece of twine in them to tie them together and glue them so they stay. And hey, that cleaver's painted already. Don't worry, we're getting to that. I just wanted to show you this part of it. You can fit those pins in there. See, very nice. Now the pins stay together. You won't lose them. You can pull them out, push, put them back in, and they stay together. So now let's paint it. Start with some dry brushing of silver in a large brush. Just have some fun with this. And see how it's much darker towards the edges. You know, and the dry brushing is going to give this a wonderful metallic look. See that? And also do this part of the handle. And then touch up with plain silver the saw teeth. Now, we want to wrap it, and let me just show you real quick. You can use string or twine to wrap it like this, and have fun with it, and make sure they crisscross, and that's nice, but if you have an old white t-shirt, you can, you can use that, and this looks a lot better. We're really happy with how this came out, but as a trick to cutting this t-shirt, what you do is you got a series of lines like this, starting on one side of the shirt, and all, almost all the way to the top. See how that is like that? So it forms that almost like draping pattern. That's because we're going to actually cut this so it's one continuous string of t-shirt. And how you do that is by cutting it at an angle like this. See it? So it's almost like a Mobius strip. Like this. And we're going to cut it at an angle like that. So not straight across. We hop to the next one over. And what happens is then you have one long continuous piece of cloth. It's a neat little trick. To go ahead and organize all of that cloth, I'll show you what I mean, into a nice little ball so you can work with it. Stretch it out in parts, don't stretch it out. The, the, the worse this looks, the better it looks, if that makes any sense. <laughs> and, then, and then go ahead, you're going to do it in two different locations. You don't want to cover that hinge. So you do some on the handle like this, wrap it, have some of it unstretched, some of it stretched, cross over it, zigzag it, hot glue it in places so it stays nice, and have some fun with it. See, looks good. I like it a lot. And fray the ends. That gives it a really, really medieval kind of look like this. You can fray those, you can pull them, twist them, let them hang loose. Like this, see that? That looks good. That's a good look. Now and then do the same thing on the blade. Wrap that blade and have some fun with this. Start at one end, glue it down, wrap it around, crisscross some, have some open, have some pulled tight. So it's very random. And I'll do some fraying on that too. Like that. Looks good. 
And once you got that looking good, we're ready to paint it. So, red, orange, brown, black, and gray. And we start out with, and we're going to water, we're going to water these down a lot. And let's start with the gray. So the very watery gray, gray do like this. So yeah, just let it soak in like that in random spots. And then we move on to our watery colors. Some yellows, some red. And put a little more emphasis on the red where the saw teeth are. And this is all very watery for now. Because that gives the cloth a really old look. See a little bit more focus on the red where the saw teeth are. Some brown, it's wonderful. And then once you're happy with that, and leave some of the cloth alone. Don't paint all of it. Now we move on to the basic colors, um, <clears throat> like black with no water. It's kind of like a highlight painting almost. And we do the same thing with some red. Plain red with no water. Particularly where those teeth are. And that's it. Looks pretty darn good. This is seriously medieval weapon. Remember, if you make this weapon, send me a picture. I will send you a certificate of contribution. I have literally given out hundreds of them. Just email it to me. Looks good. I really like it. Let's take one last look at it and see how it works, how it functions. You take the pins out, you open it or close it, and you put the pins back in it, and that's that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.